we start the debate and I invite the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, to take the floor. Madame la Présidente du Parlement européen. Madam President of the European Parliament, President of the Commission, High Representative. Just two weeks ago, in this Parliament, we expressed our shock and horror. The martyrdom of Mariupol, crimes against the city, crimes against its people. And today, we express our outrage at crimes against humanity against innocent civilians in Bucha and in many other cities. Yet more proof that Russian brutality against the people of Ukraine has no limits. Yet more proof of war crimes, summary executions, bodies littered in the streets, mass graves. This is not a special operation. These are war crimes. And we, the EU, we will not turn our backs. We will look reality straight in the eye. There must be, and there will be, severe consequences for all those responsible. And we are already supporting all efforts to collect the evidence. We will do everything, everything we can to bring the perpetrators to justice, international justice, will be served. And, dear colleagues, I have one message for the Russian soldiers on the battlefield. If you want no part in killing your Ukrainian brothers and sisters, if you don't want to be a criminal, drop your arms, stop fighting, leave the battlefield. And I know Dear colleagues, dear members of the Parliament, some of you have suggested granting asylum for these Russian soldiers who disobey Russian orders. In my opinion, this is a valuable idea that should be pursued. Dear colleagues, <laughs> dear colleagues, right now, we must do everything to make these atrocities stop. We are toughening our sanctions to keep and to exercise maximum pressure on the Kremlin. And during our last European Council meeting, we tasked the High Representative and the Commission to propose additional sanctions to the Council. We must close the loopholes. We must target any attempts to circumvent sanctions. And we are ready to move quickly with further coordinated robust sanctions. The new package includes a ban on coal import. And, ladies and gentlemen, I think, I think that measures on oil and even gas will also be needed sooner or later. <clears throat> we will stop Russian vessels from entering EU ports and impose a ban on Russian and Belarusian road transport operators will impose a full transaction ban on more Russian banks to further weaken Russia's financial system. And we will coordinate with our friends from the G7 um, organization. Ladies and gentlemen, President Biden and President Zelensky joined our last European Council meeting. President Biden's presence and President Zelensky's address sent a clear message that our transatlantic partnership and our support for Ukraine is rock solid. We are more united than ever. United in sanctioning Russia, united in putting pressure on the Kremlin, united in supporting Ukraine as much as we can. We know we are in this for the long haul with the United States, Canada, Japan, Australia, the Republic of Korea, the UK, and many countries and friends around the world, we are ready to bear the costs of sanctions, and most importantly, our unity, our EU unity, our transatlantic unity, our determination, these are our main assets to end the war, 
to stop these atrocities and to help rebuild Ukraine. We will continue to assist Ukraine with political, financial, humanitarian and material support. We have agreed to develop a Ukraine Solidarity Trust Fund in the short term. It will help support the state of Ukraine. In the long term, it would provide massive investments to rebuild the economy and infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, this war is a human tragedy. Over 10 million people have fled the war in Ukraine. More than 6 million are internally displaced, while over 4 million have fled to the EU, mostly women and children. We are welcoming them with dignity and with solidarity. Because the Ukrainian people deserve our support, we will continue to offer them any assistance they need, such as housing, education, health care, and we will pay special attention to the most vulnerable women, children, who could fall prey to traffickers. The Stand Up for Ukraine pledging event in Warsaw on Saturday will help raise money and other support for refugees and internally displaced people. I would like to express my gratitude to all and especially to the countries bordering Ukraine for their solidarity, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Moldova. Ladies and gentlemen, rarely has the contrast between right and wrong been so stark. The war in Ukraine is a moment of truth and urgency for Europe. Cette guerre en Ukraine est un moment de vérité. This war in Ukraine is a moment of truth. It is a moment of urgency for the EU. The war in Ukraine has opened our eyes to the urgency of strengthening European sovereignty to build a strategic European Union. At the last council meeting at Versailles, that was the opportunity to take steps forward towards a Europe of defence, more uh, energy or food sovereignty. On the issue of energy, let's be clear, let's be precise. We have to phase out this dependence as soon as possible on Russian fossil fuels. Over the last month, there have been a number of European councils and heads of state have talked about this issue of energy. They have called on the Commission for proposals for reports in order to make operational progress here for what is a very important priority. I think the messages from the Council are very strong. It shows the unity of the EU. It shows the importance of acting now to diversify our sources of supply. The US, Canada, other countries, Azerbaijan, Algeria, Egypt, the countries of the Gulf, we have to act to accelerate this process. I think it is a strong message. We need to put in place platforms where we can pool our resources and have common procurement. So we have a stronger leveraging here and it's going to help us get to independence faster. It's going to help us deal with prices. And then prices, of course, is another issue that we have to address. Even before the war, the rise in energy prices was really hitting hard our citizens, it was affecting our companies and their ability to develop. Since the summer, even before the start of the war, we gave a mandate to the Commission to work on some operational proposals. Uh, some were presented at the European Council and we will meet again uh, when the uh, Commission is going to present um, further proposals. There will be detailed consultation with industry as well we want to have a real impact here. It's not just about stocking gas for uh, next winter um, or interconnections, which are hugely important as well. When it comes to food security, this is an issue of sovereignty, which is extremely important for us in Europe. We need to take measures here. Again, the Commission has put forward a paper on which we will continue to work we really have to address this issue. We have to take into account the situation in developing countries as well, our neighboring countries. I'm thinking particularly of Africa here, which is suffering and which will continue to suffer. So I think it's important and the French presidency will work on this. 
together with the European Commission, we want to have a whole range of measures, regulations as well, everything to help with imports and exports on this particular subject. And then just before concluding, I would like to talk about the issue of security and defence. I think we need to end our naivety in Europe. It is absolutely key to never forget that the European Union is a project of peace. Because we are a project of peace, we have to have the capacity to have strength in this area as well. And I would like to thank the High Representative for moving in that direction even before the war in Ukraine. And I think it was a strong message for us to send arms to Ukraine just days after the start of the war. We have Article 42.7 of our treaty, which we have reaffirmed, which talks about our collective security and our strategic compass. It is not just another document gathering dust forgotten somewhere. It is an ambitious proposal with real results, real measures here, looking at a common market when it comes to arms, military industry, partnerships, developments, areas, proposals in terms of cyber uh, security. So on all these proposals, we will have regular updates. So to conclude, let me just say that uh, we had the opportunity to have a summit with the Chinese together with the High Representative. It's important that we always confront the narrative of the Kremlin. It is not Russia versus the West and NATO. It is very important to be engaged on the international stage uh, working with China. We had meticulously prepared to argue, to present information, to raise awareness amongst the Chinese authorities why it's so important for them not to support the war and to not help Russia evade sanctions. Reaffirming our values on human rights, on democracy, democracy, showing the importance of peace, stability, prosperity in the world and how this depends on China's attitude and the attitude of other countries. We will be relentless in our efforts. This summit is one stage, but we will continue to use all the means available that we have to encourage China and other countries in the world to support China to be on the side of rule of law and on the side of peace and prosperity. Just a few weeks ago, before uh, the war, you had uh, you allowed uh, Zelensky to uh, come to address us just after the start of the war. That is a hugely important mes message that resonates with us in our hearts and our minds. And we were asked, are we really Europeans? And I think that message has stayed with me ever since the start of the war. We want to live up to the expectations here. We want to be truly Europeans. We want to show our tenacity, our unitedness, our level-headedness. We will not allow Putin to win this war because it is Europe's values of freedom and democracy that will win the day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Michel. I now invite on behalf of the Council the High Representative, Joseph Borrell.